Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the January 7th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four ship, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past, well, it's just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time frame and it's 107, thanks so much for doing that. We'll make today's show as pertinent as we can for you. And, of course, if you're listening live, we would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. Right now, as we take a look at U.S. equity futures, they're all slightly higher. The Dow's up two points, 1.0, so it's flat. The uh, Nasdaq is up 23 points. That's uh, less than two-tenths of a percent. One-tenth of a percent for the ES Mini. That's nearly five points. The Russell's up one. Spot politics, 1977. Uh, oh, I got to put the right chart up on the screen. No, sorry about that, guys. Let me actually show you what you what you've got out there. Start. What what a great start. Uh, there we go. Now you can take a look at what's going on in the uh, equity markets out here. All the markets, quite frankly. If we take a look at what took place over in Asia last night, a mixed bag, basically flat for the uh, Shanghai. It was off six points. Flat for the Nikkei, down nine points. The uh, Hang Seng, up uh, 420, nearly two percent to the upside. Over in uh, Australia, uh, their index, uh, the S and P uh, 200, up 95 points, a little over one percent. FTSE is up slightly, and the DAX is lower. Gold is flat. Silver is flat. Platinum is up four bucks. Uh, copper is up two pennies. Lights be crude up fifty-seven cents. She's trading out at eighty oh three. Uh, let's go spend. Uh, so because it is the early show, and you know this is just the process that I go through, and because we have markets that are. Uh, you know, kind of like one world markets. We like to really understand what do these numbers mean, right? The only way to understand what these numbers mean is understand where support and resistance, what type of pattern is in play. So let's just simply begin by taking a look at what's going on overseas. So we'll put up these uh, white background charts. The upper left-hand panel is going to be the Shanghai. As I mentioned, the Shanghai was off six points last night. Now, what the Shanghai has done, so if we take a look at, if I were to sum up this week uh, through most instruments, what this has been has been a test of support. So the decline after the Fed minutes and what took place overseas, it's been a test of support. Now, in the case of the Shanghai, the support level is its breakout area, 37.38.72. That was tested and rejected yesterday. Today, you've got a sideways-ish type move out here. So what does it mean? Well, if support has held, what should then take place is price should make a run for resistance. Where is resistance? That's that green line, Stevie's little squiggly green line, green red line out there, 37.9451. So that's its message. Couldn't bust them down. We'll try to bust them up. The Hang Seng went ahead and confirmed another Rhodes momentum indicator signal with uh, today's gap to the upside. Now, what it's dealing with is a prior swing point. That's from back on January 3rd. So just a few days ago, that high of 23.605. If, in fact, we see the... Uh, Hang Seng, trade above this Sunday night. It's going to go target the prior swing point up in the uh, 25, uh, 24, 350-ish type range out there. So that's its message. Its message is it wants to move higher. The Shanghai's message, it wants to move higher. The Nikkei, a different message. The Nikkei went ahead and confirmed a sell the D point. So it's got a TD9 count bottom, but you want A to B right up here to this uh, high on December 16th. And then you had your C to D leg. And then a couple of days ago was that bearish reversal candle, the Three River Evening Star. And 
today's close, second close below the red oscillator and change line, suggests perhaps a run back to this uh, TD9 count bottom back on December 1st, and that would be in the 27,590, 28,106 level. If we take a look at the DAX, so the DAX has a valid TD9 count. That was confirmed yesterday. But all prices done, as I mentioned, what we can, what we can communicate to you, what I can share with you, is all that is taking place right now, with the exception of being the Nikkei, is prices pulling back and testing support. In the case of the DAX, it's the oscillator and change line. It's green. I developed that oscillator and change line so that I could determine when a retracement was just a retracement or there was something more to it. Well, when you pull back to a green line, a green line is bullish. If you pull back to that bullish line and you bounce off of it, that leaves you with a bullish message. However, because it has a valid top, TD9 count top, we're at actually in a neutral zone between that high. That high would have to be taken out to negate that pattern, or we need to see a close below 15,930 to suggest a move lower. We don't have that as we speak at 8.12 in the morning. I'm not sure where that ends up, that 1.12 in the afternoon, but you should go take a look. The FTSE, it also has a TD9 count top. It has a sell the D point top. Price here hasn't even gotten back to its oscillator and change line. It's green oscillator and change line, 74.24. So that would be the level to be watching. But what we can say is the Shanghai uh, message is support is held and should head higher. The Hang Seng, the same thing. The DAX, the same thing. The FTSE, the same thing. The Nikkei is the only one that suggests that it wants to move lower. With regard to currency pairs out here, the U.S. dollar, the euro, and the yen, the U.S. dollar has just been trading sideways within its daily profile after forming a Rhodes momentum indicator top way back here on the trading day. Uh, that pattern generated on December the 15th out there, just a sideways move. You can see the similar sideways move inside the euro out here. So not getting a real good, clear signal as to what their intent is. In the case of the Japanese yen, it has been weakening in a pretty large way. Now, it has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. That's a black diagonal line, but that has to be confirmed with a bearish reversal candle. We don't have that as we speak, and price is above its green oscillator and change line. So my read on this is that uh, price wants to continue to move higher until it proves to you and I something different. So that's what's going on overseas. That's what's happening in the uh, currency market. So now let's go take a look at what's going on in our market, in the U.S. equity futures, which are basically flat out here. So we'll switch over to those panels. Now you'll take a look at the daily time frames out here. So for this, as we step through this, I'm trying to identify support levels. I, I may have to change screens to show you. We have to go back and forth. And so, uh, but if we take a look at the ES mini and just take a look at this chart out here, this has a valid sell the D point pattern. That took place on the trading day of uh, December the 30th when it generated that bearish engulfing candle. Now, prices below a green oscillator and change line suggest a further retracement may take place. Now, what I want you to know, we, we don't have a real clear signal as I speak as we speak right now. What do you mean, Steve-O? Well, We've got an inside bar, so to speak. We are we haven't taken out yesterday's lows. We haven't taken out yesterday's highs. So if you're asking me which way does the ES Mini want to go, I don't know. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. In the case of the NQ, talking about things moving back to support, that's what it has done. So it's moved lower. It has a Rhodes momentum indicator top from November 22nd. That has led to a sideways move out here. And that's a sideways consolidation with the key level of support being 15, 5, 10. So, and, and the ES Mini is actually, uh, well, it's really not at a support level out here. So the ES Mini is kind of a wild card. But when we get back to this break, we'll continue looking at these charts and anything else that you'd like. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. 8 18 in the morning. If you're listening at 1 18 in the afternoon, thanks so much for doing so. Again, we're making today's show as pertinent as we can uh, for you. We'll be back to the normal programming hours on uh, Monday. So we're still looking at the four daily equity future contracts out here. And so in the NQ, the level to be watching the NQ is going to be 15, 8, 28, 25. If you see a close above that on the 30 minute bar, and I'll show you that chart momentarily, that's going to then suggest that uh, the NQ should continue to move higher. Its price target would be the 16071 level. I'm not saying that's the price target today, but that would be its message to you and I. In the case of the uh, Dow, uh, the Dow is not trading near any levels of support. It's got a TD9 count top. It's below the oscillator and change line. So it could be signaling to move back to so that the downside, the level would be 356. 25 that you'd be looking at. You'd have to take out yesterday's lows to give that potential signal. The Russell 2000 is the other indice to be watching. So you can see it's right up at resistance. What resistance levels? First, that red oscillator and change line. Second, the top of its uh, daily profile, but not shown here. Third would be the center of its weekly profile. So if you see a close above 22.13.40, inside the Russell 2000, pretty good indication that it wants to go target its recent highs from just a few days ago. So that's what the daily charts are communicating to us. If we go take a look at the 30-minute uh, time frame charts, and that's what we'll switch over to here momentarily, the very right-hand panel, very right-hand upper panel is the NQ. And so that 15, 8, 20, 8, 25 level is the TD9 count breakdown area. That's why I say really be two consecutive closes above that would give that signal that the NQ wants to run higher. If we get that, then the rest of the markets ought to, not guaranteed, ought to. To the downside, the level to be watching the NQ is 15,734. A close below that would at least take price back to the early morning swing point at about 330. And below that level, then we'd be looking at 15,598.50. There's a close below 15,598.50. Mm, then we're probably getting back to 15,588, 15,539. I don't really have any other clues so to speak. And of course, many of you can say, hey, Steve-O's got no clue, period. So I get that. But with regard to looking for clues inside the chart patterns as to what uh, the market wants to do, I I really don't have a, a good clue as we speak right now. Just sharing with you what I see. Maybe from what I see, uh, you can uh, gleam something. But uh, let's go out to uh, California, an early morning start to uh, Brent's day. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. How are you this morning? Uh, very well. Uh, did you get a good night's sleep? 
I did. Yep. Oh, perfect. Perfect. That's great. So you want to take a look at Beyond Meat, B Y N D. Uh, do you have you had any of their products? I don't partake in any of their food at all. I just, but I this stock I've been watching for quite some time. And if you look at yesterday's pretty nice candle, bullish engulfing candle, went slightly lower than the previous day, and it was actually a pretty wide ranging bar that it engulfed. So that's you know with volume too, but. And it looks like on the daily, it hit that bottom with, you know, better relative strength. It's a little different on the weekly as far as that goes, but it looks like it might be pretty far along in the count. I was going to have to take a look at that. Okay. And I just wanted your thoughts on the bottoming patterns and then also just areas of, uh, you know, resistance on the upside. Sure, sure. So first, with regard to resistance, very clear to both you and I, by taking a look at our black background charts. Oops, shoot, I'm not showing the... Or where where did I go to? Sorry, you're looking at my face. That's not going to help a whole, a whole lot. So as we take a look at these black background charts out here, uh, Brent, 68.84 is key resistance. That happens to be the very top of its daily profile. So whether there's a bottom pattern or not out there, we'll go take a look at that momentarily. You'd sure like to see a close above 68.84. The bottom of the weekly profile is where it's trading into right now, and that's at 66.66. That sounds pretty devilish. But a close above that would uh, would be another bullish outcome for you. So those would be the levels from a profile standpoint to observe. As we take a look at the daily time frame chart, what we're going to notice out here is yesterday was a confirmed road momentum indicator bottom pattern. That was because of yesterday's bull sash candle so 6880 have you taken a position yet or are you just watching it and trying to figure out what you what you're going to do i do have a just starter position in it okay. uh, yesterday so yeah we'll see what happens yeah, perfect. Okay, so you got the signals. As far as like counts or anything like that, nothing there. The only bottoming signal for the daily time frame for Beyond Meat was uh, yesterday's Rosemont Dominicator signal. Now, if price can clear 68.84, then the next battleground for you is going to be 79.40. And I would say if price can close above 79.40, that's a TD9 count breakdown level, then what you have for the daily time frame is a true change in trend. And then that would say the next move would be up to 99.99. So those would be the levels on the daily chart. Brent, any questions about this chart before I just flip over to the weekly? No, that's great, Steve. Thank you. You bet. So on the weekly time frame, is there any kind of a bottom signal out here? Well, as we update this, nothing that I see. But here's the real cool thing about the weekly chart bottom pattern or not what we can see here is that red oscillator and change line is really your key level of resistance price for beyond meat has not been above the oscillator and change line since july of last year july week uh, july 16th so therefore brent you'll know that you're on the right side of the trade if you can get a weekly close above 70 dollars and 12 cents now you know next week that number will be slightly different but you can see how that red line, any any retracements, any rallies have found resistance right there. So I think that's really the clue for you with regard to it beyond meat. But you've got the daily bottoming signal. You know price ran into resistance at the top of the profile. And now as we take a look at the weekly, the real piece of information for you and I is going to be that oscillator and change line. Any questions there? No, that's great. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, no, perfect. Because I love it when it makes it a little bit easier for you and I to make a determination as to what it wants to do. If I look at just a 30-minute time frame chart out here, what I don't have is any kind of a significant top other than price getting up to uh, a level of resistance, which was 6860, 68.86. That was a TD9 count breakdown level for Beyond Meat. So looks promising. But the real promise here for Beyond Meat will be the proof in the pudding, and that's a close above the red oscillator and change line for the weekly time frame. Brent, is there anything else that I can do for you? That's it. At some point today, you can take a look at goals. See if there's any kind of a potential bottom there, like on the shorter term. So I well, appreciate it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that while you're on the air. So let's go take uh, pull up the uh, gold contracts out here. And, uh, you know, if you've got that question, so do many others out there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to my eight panel set of charts out here. And you were asking specifically about short term time frames. So for the short term time frames, we start in the upper right. And what the upper right has, it has a road momentum indicator bottom that's been confirmed. But all we really have out here is just a sideways consolidation. Do we have a bottom? We do. But if the lows from yesterday get taken out or, or two days ago, which one is it? Uh, yes, uh, yesterday, I would say if the lows 1785. 80 gets taken out. That's suggesting lower price. So the 30 minute has a valid bottoming signal, as does the 60 minute, as does the 120 minute. Um, not so much in the case of the 240 
or on the five hour. Now, the five hour has shown that price has pulled back to its breakout level of support of 1786.70. We're at 1787.70 right now. So that's going to be the real key level to be watching. If we see a close below that, that could suggest that gold's going to make a move back into the 1758 area. But yes, on some of the short term time frames, 30, 60, and 120, we have valid bottoming signals out there. And if those lows fail, then I think Brent, what is suggesting to you and I is price heads back to uh, lower levels out there. The one other chart that I can uh, uh, share with folks, and I'll do this here, I'm going to switch panels for you. And that's going to be, this is, this, is, this is the nine panel chart that I usually look at here. But right now, if you take a look at the center panel for gold, you can see price is sitting right at support, potential support, the center of its weekly and center of its daily profile. Brent, I hope that helps you out with regard to Goldilocks. Sorry, I didn't manage the clock. We're going to a hard break here. Brent, but have so a much, fantastic break. You bet. You bet. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I know the uh, jobs report is uh, coming out here shortly. Uh, you know, I've got the so here just to see if there's any kind of response uh, in the jobs report. I come to my uh, market update chart that I usually do at the top of the hour for the uh, 1 p.m. show. Again, if you're listening in live, it's 830 in the morning. We're recording this show early. So uh, right now, I'm not seeing much in the way of any kind of movement out here. And before I go to the charts, there's about six charts right now. Request some from yesterday, a couple that have come in from uh, this morning that I want to get to. But just, to, you know, you got the jobs numbers being released out here. Uh, we'll see here momentarily. Um, again, I'm, I'm not, it's 830. It's got to be out. And there we go. So uh, thank you, Ruby. Uh, it says non-farm payrolls up about 200,000 versus 400,000 expected. Um, 
So, uh, but right now, if we take a look at the ES mini, that's your upper left hand corner again. Not, not really a clue here as to what it wants to do. It hasn't taken out yesterday's low or yesterday's high. Could be signaling to you and I a uh, just an inside day. The uh, spot volatility is not giving us a clue. The 50-day exponential moving average is 1956. The spot fix index is trading out at 1953, not giving us a signal. The NQ, what we do know about the NQ is support is held. And as Tom O'Brien likes to say, if you can't bust them to the downside, you try to bust them to the upside. Well, it tried to bust them to the downside. It has not been able to do so. But still here with the NQ, hasn't taken out yesterday's high or low. So not giving you or I a really great signal out there. The U.S. dollar index. Uh, now, I've got a 10-minute delay here, so the uh, jobs numbers are not going to impact that. Just a sideways move, though. Goldilocks, no impact there. But price is, as, we, uh, as I, I mentioned to Brent as we were going off the air, sitting right at a key level of support, the center of its bullish structured weekly profile. That's 1788. The center of its uh, daily structured profile, bullish structure, uh, it's just a, it's not a bullish or bear structured profile there. That would be at 1785. So key area to watch, 1785. If gold closes below that, we very likely get back to the bottom of consolidation. Really, you can, if you look at gold, it's consolidated between its weekly profile levels, 1761 to the south, 1828.50 to the north. Silver is traded back into support. The support level is the bullish structured weekly profile. That's in the range of 2182 to 2230. 2223. And price is trading inside that range, so I don't know what it's signaling to you and I. Lights recruit a whole different animal out there. It's signaling to you and I it wants higher price. Where's the next stop for Lights Week Crude? The next stop should be in the area of uh, 8786. Oh, I take that back. 8371. That would be the 1.618. A to B equals CD to the upside price projection pattern. Now, Price will target that level, 83.71, unless a bearish reversal candle forms. If you see a bearish reversal candle form, then that's going to sell, that's going to generate a sell the D point pattern. Natural gas, we're going to roll over into the next contract here uh, this coming week. But if we take a look at the February contract out there, it's got a valid bottoming pattern. Now, you don't see it on this chart here, but it does have a valid bottoming roads momentum indicator signal. However, we can see that it's gapped to the downside which is at $3.98, that is held as resistance. So not until we see two consecutive closes above that will we then say, hey, you know what? Natural gas should run at least to the top of its profile, which would be $4.36. Now that number will change as we roll over to the next contract. With regard to the 30-year treasury out here, 30-year treasury is below the support of its daily profiles. It's back inside its weekly profile. There's no bottoming signal that we have just yet. And so this suggests that the 30-year treasury may be targeting its level of support, the weekly bullish structure profile area the first level being 153.05 so not seeing much activity much movement here in the stocks since the uh, jobs uh, report numbers out here so let's go take a look at the uh, requests that came in some from yesterday a couple from today and the first one is going to be to take a look at ticker symbol INMD and as we take a look at INMD we'll start by taking a look at where is it trading is that a stock I INMD yeah INMD well uh, must be a lot of activity. Let me. It must be must be because of the jobs numbers and everything going that this thing has slowed down or the number of panels that I have open. So well, that's okay. Stevie's got the uh, white background charts that we'll go to, or I'm going to try to. There we go. Um, so yeah, I can hear I can hear my system churning and burning in the uh, back for sure. Uh, probably not the probably with the jobs numbers probably not the best time to have all those windows open. Boy, this is struggling to even open up here. So INMD that is in mode limited. Wasn't expecting this to be an issue. Come on. Oh my goodness. What do we have here? Open up. Open sesame. Okay. So I think maybe did I just delete that? No, we didn't. Okay, there we go. So here's INMD. Well, perfect. So what we have here is a rose momentum indicator top. This is the weekly time frame. Price is below the bottom of its weekly profile. So INMD should target its breakout level. That's at 51.35. That's the weekly chart. The daily chart shows a potential for a bottom. Yesterday was bar number seven of a TD9 count. So if we see a lower low, and you need to see at least a spike today tomorrow well that would be monday or tuesday so anytime between today and tuesday a spike below yesterday's low would uh, generate uh, bar number eight perhaps bar number nine of the uh, td9 count as price is pulling back to its breakout level which is 5375 so 5375 is one area to watch and 5135 is another area now we can see on the daily basis that it's triggered a rose momentum indicator signal and so a bullish reversal candle would also confirm that bottoming pattern so that's what you'd be looking at for ticker now I'll put up the 
monthly chart here real quickly, see if there's any information there. TD9 count top, and this could be suggested to pull back to 46.96. I let the weekly and the daily really control uh, what you're looking for. So again, watch those support levels, 51.35. Watch over the next couple of days the potential for a TD9 count or a Rhodes Minimum Indicator bottom signal. So I hope that that helps you out. The next question, boy, just struggling. The system is just chugging here. And well, let's do let's do this. Man, you hate when you have technical problems live during the show, but mm, and I don't have another way to really shut this thing down. Um, okay, let's go to the black background charts. Let's see if we can get the next symbol, which was Roblox L B R L X R B R B L X, which I've never used, but I got grandkids and they they're on this all the time. So, uh, which is not necessarily a good thing. Not necessarily something I'm, I, I would condone out here. Uh, so, again, just struggling. Uh, my apology. I've got to tell you maybe a story or something here as, a, as the system just kind of uh, chugs, which is amazing. So, here we got Roblox. You can see the one to one A to B equals CD uh, price projection level that it's hit. That's at the 8860 level. That alone does not mean that uh, it's time to go ahead if you're looking for a bottom. If this says bottom, why? Because we don't have the roads, uh, we don't have the bullish reversal candle. Even though yesterday's candle was green. That was not a bullish reversal candle. And that's really what you want to see to confirm a uh, to confirm a uh, buy the D point. Now, what price is doing, it's pulling back into a breakout level. Let me uh, get the volume out there. Does that do that? There we go. So from a volume standpoint, this thing really broke out of the trade day of November 9th. Wide price spread, accelerated volume, 93 million shares out there. Yesterday, you're pulling back with 17. So you're pulling back into a breakout level with light volume. Now, that breakout level could take you down to the 1.272 A to B equals CD to the downside, which would be in the 78.43 level. So that's what I would be watching as I take a look at the Roblox out there. Let's try pull over this white background chart. See see if this will expand for me. It There we go. Um and no bottom signal here. Now, if those support levels that I gave you didn't hold, that breakout area, the real breakout on a daily time frame would be $74.10 out there. So those that's what I would be watching for um, is some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm the A to B equals CD to the downside. You have price projection areas, but it doesn't really matter to you. What matters is that you're waiting for the bullish reversal candle to confirm that bottom on the daily time frame. For ticker symbol there, RBLX. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be 
be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, again, we're uh, recording the show today. It's 842 in the morning. If you're listening at 142, thanks so much for doing so. The screen that you're looking at here is uh, what's transpired since the release of the uh, job numbers today. And really not much. The knee-jerk reaction sent to equity futures a bit lower out here. The Dow's down 60 points. The NASDAQ 100 off 103. Uh, we're going to go take a look at the details of the NASDAQ 100, or at least the uh, top eight stocks that make up, or nine stocks that make up about 50% of the weight in there. So we'll get a feel for what they're communicating to us. But first, I want to go ahead and uh, get to the uh, request uh, out here. So those requests uh, taking us. Next one is to uh, go to Palantir. Uh, so that is ticker symbol PLTR. And the question was, I'm not sure what the question, I don't recall what the question was. But here's what we do know. Price trade below the bottom of its daily profile, the bottom of its weekly profile, not enough information on the monthly to give us any kind of profile information. So what we're looking for is some type of bottoming signal out here. So in the case of Palantir, here is the daily time frame. We get up, that up on our screen. Oh, I deleted the daily. Son of a gun. Okay. Well, uh, so here's the weekly time frame. If you're asking, is there a chance for a bottom? The answer is yes. Why? Because you are in bar number nine of a TD nine count. The oscillator and change line for the weekly time frame went from green to red. So typically, we will see when you get a bottoming signal, and this is a bottoming signal, we should get to bar number complete bar number nine today. Now you can't get a lower low. Uh, next week. So the bar following bar number nine could be the bottom of this. But if you're asking on a weekly basis, is this giving us a sign of a bottom? The answer is yes. Is that TD9 count? And price should move up to about the 2063 level. That's the current oscillator unchanged line. Now, I'm just going to switch this to the daily time frame here since I deleted the daily chart earlier. And uh, let's let this populate and see what we see out here. Now, the oscillator and change line is wrong because it's still set to the weekly time frame. So I'm not going to worry about that. What, you'd really, what you're really looking for is from a daily perspective, you can see that this has a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. So what you'd really like to see to confirm that bottom then, right? So the, the weekly is signaling the potential for a bottom. Now you want the confirmation to come from the daily. The daily chart bottom signal that you're looking for is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. And then this has a battle battles to the upside. Why? Because price is below those profile levels. So your battle to the upside, if you get that signal, that confirmed signal, would be 1802 would be one level, 1866 would be the next level, and then 1913. So that's what I see when we take a look at ticker symbol PLTR. Hope that helps you out. There was a request yesterday to take a look at EOG. And as that comes up on our screen out here, we can see that this is above the top of its daily profile, but found resistance at the top of its weekly. So the level to be watching today is if you can get a close of 9637 that is the top of the weekly profile that would be a bullish signal for you 
Do we see anything else? Price above the top of the monthly profile. So it's just the weekly. And the other thing that you'll be watching for is the swing point on a daily basis goes back to November 8th and has volume about 3.5 million shares. Yesterday it was 5 million shares. So you were pushing into that swing point with volume. You rejected it, but just because you rejected it doesn't mean you rejected it. It means because you're pushing in with volume, you should get back up into that swing point. But the level to be watching at today's close would be 96.37. A close above that on the EOG would be a bullish outcome. Not that it's bearish. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, no topping signal at all. Bar number four was yesterday, so nothing that I see there. Other and prices moving into that swing point with volume, so should be able to take that out. Uh, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart here, what do we have? You've got a TD9 count top. So I gave you 96.37. Now we're going to adjust that, knowing that we have a valid top out here. Your real resistance level is going to be that high. And that high is 98.20. So 98.20 is a level that price needs to clear, close above on a weekly basis to suggest that EOG is ready to continue running to the upside, which is really the message uh, coming from its uh, monthly time frame chart. But first, it's got to deal with the weekly and the daily signals out there. So thanks for waiting an extra day on that. I hope that helps you out with regard to EOG. Now, the requests that have come in this morning, just uh, two of them. And those two uh, requests are to take a look at uh, Walgreens Boots. Uh, Alliance, WBA. And as we take a look at the uh, Walgreens boots, I, I don't recall the question, my apology, but if we just take a look at the stock charts, let's just see what they say. So on a daily basis, if we have a, a confirmed top out here, and I don't know that we do just yet, we'll go look at the charts, uh, price should go target the top of its daily profile, 51.34. What you want to notice about this is when a profile forms below price, that is a bullish message. And that's what we have here with regard to Walgreens boots. I maintain that is what the message is unless we see a close below 51.34. So that is support. Uh, the daily time frame uh, or the weekly time frame, we've got a, a bearish shooting star, but that's as if we were to close yesterday. That is not the signal. So we really need to see what today's. Let's look at the white background chart, see if there's any other signals out here to assist us. Well, voila, there is. If we take a look at the daily time frame, uh, we have a TD9 count top. So in this case here, Remember, the TD9 count, the top or the high, needs to form on bar 8, 9, or the bar following 9. In this instance here, for Walgreens Boots, it was the bar following 9. And it is the high of that pattern that is key. A close above that high is the only thing that negates that signal. In this case here, it would have been a close above 5407. We didn't get that. We didn't get that two days ago. We certainly didn't get that yesterday. So we've got the valid TD9 count top. So what you're going to want to watch here, and this is for... Mm, I'm not sure who it's for um, because there's no name. Uh, but uh, what you want to watch is prices pulled back to that key level of support, which is its green oscillator and change line. That level is 52.34. If price closes below that, then price is going to go tag that 51.34 level. And if it gets below that, then you're looking at 50.15 to 50.54. Those would be your battlegrounds. And the final battleground would be 48.96. That would be a potentially a nice buy point out there. But the daily has a confirmed top. How about the weekly as we take a look at Walgreens. Um, I don't have a. I don't have any kind of a topping signal. The only thing I really see here, or sort of see, is just simply a sideways consolidation on the weekly time frame. So on the monthly chart here, the monthly chart says, "Hey, I want to make a move to 57.05 to 59.78," but the daily is really going to control that. So keep your eyes on the daily time frame for Walgreens boots. WBA is the ticker symbol. The second request that came in from this individual is to take a look at uh, Cisco. So if we can get this chart to close up, CSCO is the ticker symbol. If you want to pull that up on your screen, I'll go straight to, because I only have about a minute here in this segment, I'll go straight to the uh, white background chart. So when we take a look at Cisco, what do we have? TD9 count top, price below the bottom of its daily profile. If I were to ask you, where is it that you believe price is targeting? Many of you would say that's simple, Stevie, 5790. That is the breakout level out here. So that's what it looks like that Cisco wants to head to. You've got that confirmed top, no daily bottom signal out at as we speak right now. So 5790 in the case of Cisco is likely where it is uh, targeting. Oh, I guess I had just a tad more. I did that one pretty quickly out there. So let me see if there's anything else that has come in. The answer is no, although I do see some Jumping in the Tiger's Den now. That's from John in Philly. And John wants to take a look at the uh, the NQ charts. So he would like to see that uh, eight panel chart. It is a terrific way to understand what's going on with an instrument for all different time frames out there. So now that I've blown my own horn out here, let's actually go take a look at the charts and you can make that determination. So here you're going to see, and we've just got about, I'll leave this up during the uh, breakout here. You've got the uh, monthly chart in the upper left. The uh, five-hour chart in the lower right, the upper right, you got the 30-minute, 
that's what starts the intraday signals out here. So all we really know about the NQ right here, John, is that uh, price has held support. And that's the bottom of its bullish structured profile, and that's the 15,588 level. Even if price were to pierce that, price needs to close below 15,510 to give you a signal that it wants to move lower. With regard to the intraday time periods out here, the key level of support on the 30 minute chart is gonna be 15,598 out there and only a close below that would signal lower price. To the upside, you're watching 15,828.25. Close above that says we do move higher inside the end. See roads with GF and N. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So we began the show at 8 o'clock this morning, or uh, about 6 after 8. Uh, you know, we weren't really getting any uh, significant signals as to what the market's intent was. Why? Because if we take a look at the equity futures out here, uh, in the case of the ES Mini, it had neither broken yesterday's high or yesterday's low. Same uh, position as we're in right now at 854. Same situation inside the NQ. Same situation inside the Russell 2000 at your rear right hand panel. However, that's not what we have inside the Dow Equity Future contract. So that's how we're going to end the show. We're going to go take a look at its eight panel charts because price has pierced 
yesterday's low. That could be a signal that price wants to pull back to 35.808. That might be its message. But we need to go take a look at what's going on in the short-term time frame charts. And that's what leads us to this eight-panel chart out here. Now, what I do want to start with here is the five-hour time frame. Now, this five-hour bar is not going to complete uh, for about another five minutes out here. But it looks like you're going to get bar number nine of a TD9 count. Price is broken below the uh, support level of 36,120. But boy, for the five-hour time frame, you've got a valid, potential valid bottoming signal. The next five-hour bar doesn't uh, conclude until 2 p.m. But in your, that's the one o'clock show. If price is trading about 36,120, key support will have held, and that would suggest that price will move up to about the 36,356 level. If price is trading below 36,120, uh, the TD9 count hasn't taken hold, then that's suggesting we probably are headed or looking at 35,808. Uh, we can see that on the intraday time frame charts, there are some roads meant to indicator signals for the 30 and the 60 minute time frame. Those levels of support are being tested right now. A close back above. 36.074 and your 36.061 right now uh, in four minutes would say that support has held on those patterns. But if they fail, then the only thing that we have to uh, hang our hat on for an additional clue would be the uh, Dow. I would watch the other equity future contracts. Remember the NQ trading back towards support. Those key levels there being 15.588 and then 15.539. Folks, stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien is up next if you're listening at 9 o'clock. David White's up next if you're listening at 1. Have a fantastic Friday, a fantastic weekend. Be safe out there. I'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. Take care, folks.